जनरल फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन बिफोर वी डिस्कस द जनरल फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन I just want to ask you that why it is known as the general physical examination because generally you are assessing the each and every system of the body for example whenever you are taking the blood pressure of the patient whenever you are checking the pulse of the patient whenever you are measuring the jvp that means you are giving touch to the cardiovascular system and when you are checking the respiratory rate of the patient that means you are giving touch to the respiratory system of the patient and when you are checking the lymph nodes and you are checking the temperature of the patient that means you are giving touch to the immune system of this patient overall you are assessing generally almost all the systems of the body therefore it is known as the general physical examination any exam any exam starts with the 3p permission position and the proper exposure in the permission you have to first of all introduce yourself to the patient that who you are and what you are to do and after that proper exposure and the position as i'm shaking the hand and explaining the patient that i am going to perform the general physical examination on you with your permission the proper exposure is not carried out in this patient because we are recording the video and it was not the consent given by the patient for the proper exposure permission position and proper exposure after taking this go to the foot end of the patient from there generally assess the physique height build of the patient and all the patient to take the deep breath in order to see the respiratory movements and also they are asked for the cough reflex in order to rule out any hernia then put the hands on the inguinal area and ask the patient for the cough reflex to confirm the finding that you observed on the inspection Now the general physical examination is divided into two components vitals and the non vitals if you miss one of the component of non vitals you can be forgiven but if you miss the vitals then you cannot be forgiven in the vitals check for the temperature of the patient but before that get the mercury line at the base and ask the patient to put it in his axilla now check for the pulse If the pulse is regular you can count it for 15 seconds and get it multiplied with the 4 but if it is irregular then you have to count for 1 minute now after that respiratory rate of the patient respiratory rate is something that the patient can modulate himself or herself therefore to divert the mind of the patient you have two methods either put something on the belly of the patient and see the movement of that thing or divert the mind of patient by putting your hand on the pulse and see the movements of the abdomen and then go for the blood pressure measurement the blood pressure first go for the palpatory method and then after go for the auscultatory method in the palpatory method the reading that you obtained in the auscultatory method it should be greater than 10 mm mercury almost the reading that you obtained on the palpatory in the auscultatory go for 10 mm mercury for example in the palpatory you obtained 120 then up to 130 you can go for that now as i am performing the oscar tree
Oscar Tater is performed first by filling the brachial artery, then put the diaphragm of your stethoscope on the brachial artery and inflate the cuff of a protus and then ask the patient to give you back the thermometer and notice the reading. Now hands. His patient is able to take his arms above and against the gravity that means he has got the power of 3 by 5. It's generally I assessed also the power in the upper limbs. Now these are the flapping tremors that I am checking. Now for the clubbing go at the level of fingers and notice the clubbing. If you are able to notice the clubbing then check that finger first. You don't need to go for each and every finger. Don't waste your time. The fingers in which you are assuming there is the clubbing then notice it. And the first test is the fluctuation test. Don't need to go for the car test or the shimrock sign. If the fluctuation test is positive, then you may go for the car test. But if it's negative, then don't go for the car test. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your wit. Just be smart. Then nodes and in the nerves splinter hemorrhages. Pittings on the palmar aspect of the hand, check the thinar muscle vesting and the hypothenar muscle vesting, the pitron contracture, synovitis, and perform the squeeze test. See, you are also giving touch to the rheumatological system. Now directly go to the face. In the face, look for the alopecia, dehydration and ear cavity hygiene. For that you must have the torch with you in order to have the overview of the ear cavity then nasal cavity and then mouth oral cavity see you are also giving touch not only to the integumentary system that the skin but also the dental system now for the anemia ask the patient to look up and for the jaundice ask the patient to look down go to the foot end again and see for the pedal edema if it is present then go up to the extent and also look for the clubbing in the toes don't forget it ask the patient to raise up and see for the thyroid system ask the patient to deglue it for you if there is the evidence of abnormality, then you can go thoroughly again for the thyroid system examination. Now for the lymph nodes. The thyroid gland is palpable, you will also palpate that. So if the thyroid gland is visible, you will also palpate that. Otherwise, the lymph nodes. Simultaneously, don't palpate the lymph nodes because if the patient is having the carotid sinus hypersensitivity, the patient may go into syncope. Palpate one side and then compare it pre-auricular, post-auricular mandibular anterior cervical chain posterior cervical chain in the axilla ask the patient to put his arm on your shoulder and before they take the consent because axilla is the private part 
and insert your hand superiorly into axilla. Five group of the lymph nodes are here. Anterior axial lymph node. Feel it with your thumb and index finger by holding the anterior axillary fold. In posterior axillary fold, centrally, laterally, and apically. Now these are the epitrochular. Inguinal lymph nodes, two chains are present, horizontal and vertical, but before that, again, take consent from the patient. Now, JVP. For the JVP, the patient should be at the angle of 45. Really the question asked is that how you will differentiate between the arterial pulsation and the venous pulsation. Venous pulsations. Venous pulsations are modifiable with the respiratory movement and the position while the arterial pulsations are not modifiable. Venous pulsations can be increased by performing the hepatojugular reflex. Venous pulsations have got a double shot or double stroke while the arterial pulsations have not got the double stroke. Venous pulsations can be occluded by applying pressure or arterial pulsations cannot be occluded. Let's consider the area that I have marked. It is the upper end of JVP, jugular venous pressure. Put your skin on that upper end vertically and measure it on that scale which is perpendicular applied or placed to the angle of Louis. The distance or the measurement obtained on that is actually the rest JVP. Amiya video, Amiya video on the YouTube channel, you can see it. Okay, right? Let's see it. 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 Let's see it.